at that for a view. Fine day. Does it make up for the latest Range Rover fault? Nearly. So here we are, latest fault, suspension fault, vehicle lifting slowly. Bing bong. It has been since oh, two weeks since the last fault, so we were due one. Air suspension faults, always a good fun thing to find out and solve. Let's pop in the gap diagnostics tool, see what that little baby tells us, and then get this tub home and let the fun begin. So join me on this jolly little trip to uh, solve my air suspension problem, hopefully. It'll be fun. Maybe. First of all, let's see if we can actually move the suspension up. Vehicle lifting slowly. I can hear the compressor going. That's good. Are we actually lifting? Yeah, uh-huh. Still lifting here, yeah, that's slow. Okay, what else are you gonna do? Let's reach over for my trusty diagnostics tool. Ah, suspension fault. And what else? Are you going to tell me anything else? No. And. It's deactivated. That. So. Reaching for my trusty. Gap IID tool. Never leave home without it, especially if you've got a Range Rover. And uh, let's plug that into the OBD2 port and see what we got. I'm going to need two hands for that. We've got an RLM suspension fault, code C1A20-64 brackets AF, close brackets, pressure increases too slow when filling reservoir, algorithm base failure, signal plausibility failure. Wow, lots of things that is, isn't it? Let's get this tub back home, investigate further, or I'm suspecting we've either got a leak a uh, problem with the compressor or both you can see there's nearly 204,000 miles on the clock um, the compressor is the original compressor I know this because I've had this motor from new it's 15 years old so the compressor probably isn't happy further investigation needed Watch this space, I shall return. So let's start by popping up an exploded diagram of the L322 air suspension with all of its major components. And as you can see, there's plenty there that can go wrong. Some of it very expensive, some of it a nightmare to work on. But the potential for leaks and failure is pretty significant. Well, hope this be fun. However, we do have our fault code from our gap diagnostics for C1A2064, which indicates it's likely to be either six or seven on this diagram, which is the reservoir valve block at the rear or the compressor or both. So we're going to start with those as the most likely candidates. Now we can rule out some of the major components visually. So if we look at 13 and 17 on this diagram, which are the front left and right hand strut assemblies, 
which have got the airbag on the top. And numbers five and eight, which are the rear right and left hand air springs. So if we leave the car raised mode overnight and come back tomorrow and have a look, if there's any significant splits in those bags, the car will have deflated beyond its backside on, its, on the uh, bump stops and we'll know there's some serious splits. Now, we also shouldn't forget the air reservoir itself, which I'm now pointing to on the diagram for your convenience. Uh, this is also on my car, the original air reservoir. So it's 15 years old and has been sat under the car for the last 204,000 miles in all kinds of conditions. Uh, so we're going to whip out our spray bottle full of nice bubbles, get ourselves under the car and uh, spray it down and see if we can find any air leaks. However, as we can only see about a third of it, uh, even though we might not be able to find any air leaks, it doesn't mean there isn't one, because the only way to be absolutely sure is to drop it out and test it. Uh, and while we've got the bubbles out, we'll be spraying everything else we can find as well to see if there's any leaks. And then we shall proceed to the compressor. Well, here we are on day two of trying to find out what our suspension fault is. And I'm chuffed a bit to come out to find that although it's been sat for 18 hours, it's not deflated, sagged, sat on its bump stops overnight. Uh, I'm very pleased about that because air struts and airbags are crazy expensive. So uh, I'm pretty confident we've got no significant splits and I'm even confident we've got no tiny little splits because if it had, it had been working its way down trying to level itself overnight and be on its backside. So let's jump in and see what else we can find out and see if we can push forward and narrow it down. So we've now jumped in the jalopy and equipped with the gap diagnostics tool which is connected to my phone and my highly calibrated digit we're going to see what we can establish and uh, if we can narrow down the list of suspects which is causing our suspension fault so we're going to have a look at the uh, gallery pressure uh, and try and raise the suspension and see what it gives us here we go. Here we are in normal ride height. Let's see if we've got any suspension. Let's see if we can raise it and see what happens. And no bing bong yet. I can hear the compressor going. It's raising but very, very slowly. I'm expecting a suspension full bing bong any second now. There we go, we've got a vehicle lifting slowly message. And I can hear the compressor, but it is going up slowly. Now let's pause right there for a minute and take a look at those figures. The gallery pressure is about equivalent to a nap breaking wind. Maybe I overstate that, maybe I understate that. It's not my field of expertise. However, it's not enough to have a fully functioning air suspension system. 228 kilopascals is about 33 psi we actually want about 1550 kilopascals which is around 225 psi so what we've got ain't a lot 
So what's going on? I can hear the compressor trying to do its thing, but I suspect what I'm hearing is the motor and the piston whizzing around isn't doing a lot, which would kind of indicate the piston seal has worn, which isn't surprising, it's 15 years old. The temperature and the sensor that's giving us that temperature is located on the piston housing near enough and it's not increasing. So the piston's not doing anything. So that's a problem. What we know is we've got a problem with the compressor, the reservoir block, the lines to the reservoir or the reservoir itself or all of them won't that be fun so I think we'll start with the compressor knowing it's the original one and very very tired a bit like me and we'll work from there expecting that we may have more than one problem I'm not going to do that today though it's chucking it down and I don't fancy lying on a cold concrete floor in the wet but we've got a plan let's carry on see what we can do so let's delve in and whip the compressor out it's in the boot under the spare wheel so let's whip that wheel out and get to the compressor. There's the compressor. Well, under the cover anyway. So, next thing is take the cover off. Okay, we've given it a bit of a clean out before we take this cover off. And we're gonna remove four bolts, eight mil bolts. Here we have the compressor. It's looking quite tidy. Anything obvious? That's the air dryer. Nothing obvious. Right, before we take it out, we'll go and fire it up and see if there's anything obvious. To get this out, we're going to remove one, two, three, four, which are eight mil again. We're going to have to disconnect that, which is a clip, that. and we're going to have to disconnect these go to these go to the air suspension struts and i think this goes to the reservoir back to the reservoir so we can lift that out of there by the looks of it 
wiggle that out, that's just sat in a bracket. Disconnect the bottom one, which is a push-in collet. And we should be able to get all of that out. Oh, that doesn't look right. It looks a bit corroded. Other than that, not too bad. All right, first of all, let's uh, fire up the air suspension and uh, make sure this is all working and there's nothing obvious. Yeah, okay, suspension fault, it's been running too, too long, it hasn't been able to raise it um, and it's cut out, so that's the error we're getting. Let's service it. We're trying to get this valve block out, which is clipped in, that wiring is clipped in down there. <sighs> Give that a squeeze and pull. Clip out there. Okay, so that's free. Then lift this up out with two rubber bungs, bungs even, holding this in. That's free, that's free, that's free. And out the way, let's put that out the way. That's free. So we've now got four eight millimeter bolts. And once we've got these out, we should be able to lift the compressor and a tray out. You will notice this says rear. That's very convenient for them to remind us that's the way it goes back in. Well, I'm not sure you can actually get it back in the wrong right way. And there we go. The compressor and the tray is out. We've now brought it inside, it's easier to work on, and we're nearly there. Just to get the compressor out, we've got to do this bolt, this bolt, disconnect this pipe, pressing in the collet, pulling out the pipe. This tells you how far you're going to have to push it in. So that's free. Let's do difficult with one hand. Camera and the other. None of them have been tight. And they're all eight millimeters, which is nice. There's a washer on that one. Okay. So, washer on that one. No washer on that one. Install that back in to there, into the pushing collet. Will we actually come out now? No. We have got. A screw there. That should be the last he said. Okay, put you down for this. Okay, we are gonna have to take we're going to have to take these out completely, these four. I'll have to put you down for a minute because then they did both hands. Um, these four bolts 
did have to come out and um, it's that through there a washer underneath the assembly into that underneath a bit filly to get out but there we go that's out so now this whole thing should lift off which it does oh, it's interesting little mark now we've got to there let's see what's next okay. what's next is the reason we had to take it out of the tray is this bolt underneath again another eight mil and this should he said famous last words be the last thing that stops us taking Now we should be able to slide it out. And there we go. That's the compressor out. Yeah, much easier if you use two hands and not trying to film it. And not too difficult a job. So, the air dryer we're going to service that we're going to take the end cap off and replace it with replace the desk oh look at that desiccant inside and the filters and we're going to service the piston which is in there let's go and order some bits we're getting there Look at these, lots of different kits to fix your suspension. Friendly sight. Loads of things, shiny things. That's what I'm having. So that's a new end cap. That's a piston service kit. And air dryer service kit. Look at that, C1A20-64, that's our code. Suspension error, only normal height available. Suspension fault, pressure not, etc, etc, etc. Oh, and look, a diagram. Warm piston seals, yep. Saturated filters, yep. Leaking end cap, yep. I mean, there are lesser kits available but this one's got a shiny new end cap to replace my dull black plasticky one sold add to cart buy it is it here yet well thanks for getting this far Appreciate you watching. If you found anything of any use whatsoever, drop me a like. If you thought it was boring and bored you to tears, drop me a like anyway. Pat yourself on the back for doing a good deed for the day and be on your way. And if you can consider subscribing, if you enjoy watching grumpy middle-aged bloke chucking spanners around, mumbling to himself and fixing stuff, give it a subscribe as well. See you in the next one. Cheers.